So welcome everyone to the 19th in a series of free webinars hosted by the Chamber of Commerce under the theme supporting businesses in a time of crisis. I'm Will Pinot, I'm the CEO of the Chamber. The topic of this webinar is get ahead and stay ahead. And today we are delighted to be partnering with Ahead Ahead Limited, a business coaching company which specializes in helping businesses and their teams achieve breakthrough performance. This session will adopt a business coaching approach. The main objective of today's webinar is to provide you with a strategic framework and valuable tools to help you reframe the COVID-19 experience from one of crisis to opportunity, innovation, and growth. Our presenter for today's session is Catherine Gilbard, whom I will now formally introduce. Now, Kathy, as I know her by, she's the owner of Ahead, Ahead Limited. She's a certified business coach and a neuro-linguistic programming, programming practi practitioner. Wow. Her skills and experience include working with entrepreneurs, C-suite executives, and senior management teams to break through performance barriers and add value to their businesses. Catherine holds a degree in economics, is an, is an accredited director with over 25 years of experience in both public and private sector business arenas. She was a CEO of a statutory authority for over five years and has over 20 years senior management experience. And as an entrepreneur, she manages five private companies in two jurisdictions. Her businesses include business coaching, commercial real estate, and vacation property rentals. In 1991, Catherine was uh, graduated from the University of Toronto, uh, Canada with a BS in economics of quantitative methods. And in 2009, she completed the legal studies uh, program at the University of Liverpool Law School. In 2013, Kathy became a certified business consultant and executive coach and continued on to become an NLP practitioner. She is registered as an independent director with the Cayman Islands Monetary Authority. So before I turn it over to Kathy, let me remind you that you can submit questions during the presentation via the chat feature. Uh, Kathy would also say, you know, if you like what she's saying, there's a thumbs up button and, and, a, and, a, and a clapping feature. Um, give her some support during her presentation. And also, if you want to provide, um, if you have a question, there's also the raise the hand feature, which will, you can use towards the end of the presentation. So again, feel free to put your questions in the chat. We'll get to those when I moderate the discussion. And so for the feedback session, again, I ask you, you can raise your hand at the bottom of the screen. It allows you to indicate if you wish to ask a question through the mic, and I'll open your mic when that happens. So. Again, I'd like to welcome Kathy and say, um, delighted to have you in the, the Chambers training program. And I'm gonna let you take it away. Good luck. Thanks, Will. Let me work this technology now. So can everybody see my screen? Will, are, is my screen visible? Not yet. Share the screen button. There you go. Uh, sorry, I just um, bear with me for a, a quick moment here. I had a, a slight. Okay, I'm back with you now, and I'm going to try to share the screen. Okay, and I need to get my presentation. Sorry, I just lost it for a second there. Okay, slight technical different difficulty there. Everybody on board? So, first of all, I'd like to thank Will for uh, that great intro. Um, and I'd also like to welcome all the participants who took time out to come and join me today talking about getting ahead and staying ahead. I know that we have uh, people from Canada, from Jamaica, from the US, and of course from Cayman, from the UK as well. Welcome 
to all of you. This session is a follow-up to an excellent presentation a couple of weeks ago by Savage Consulting. They took an operational approach uh, to evolving your business. And in today's webinar, what we'll be doing is complementing all that has been said before and moving that conversation along. So let's go. I'd like to start with just giving you a quick roadmap of what we'll be covering in the time that we have together. The presentation is roughly about 30 minutes long. So we'll be covering five areas. Uh, the brick wall, which is what I'm calling COVID-19, and you'll hear more about that. The power of the pause. This is an interesting concept that I really will be hammering home and hope it resonates with you. The five key components of decision-making in times of crisis. The pivot, and for those of us in business, we know what that's all about. And finally, I think we're gonna wrap up with lessons learned that will forever change how we do business. So before we get too much into the presentation, this is, as Will said, uh, a business coaching approach. And business coaching is really designed to help uh, participants bring awareness to some of the barriers that get in the way of the success of your business. Well, we really have a big one right now. There are lots of tools and lots of frameworks, all of which are designed to lead business owners to making decisions, the right decisions that include all of these barriers that are in the way of them getting ahead. So I want to start off with context because context really is everything. COVID-19 is probably the biggest challenge your business has and may ever face. This was what struck me when the whole COVID lockdown and the whole global economic crisis um, really came to the fore. We've never faced anything like this. And if you're a business person, I mean, who would have ever thought? We can compare this experience to, like I said before, hitting a brick wall. And I'll show you the power in doing that. Well, the good news is your business can survive the crash of hitting this big wall, that brick wall that we're calling COVID-19. And if you have a really great strategy, you can come out ahead. Well, why should you even con continue to listen to this webinar? I think we should get that on the table. Well, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And during this experience, you may gain a new perspective. You may be like other business leaders, just swamped with all of the decisions and the issues that you're facing right now. This is a good mental break that's on topic that could really help you, as I said before, gain a new perspective. You may be really looking for that process to help building the right strategy for you and that will work for your business during the COVID crisis. And for some of us, it really helps, even though we're leaders in business, to feel more confident that we are making these right decisions and that we can move ahead and stay ahead of the curve. So your business hit this brick wall, COVID-19. No one saw it coming. Many businesses were stopped dead in their tracks. Everyone is speculating amidst all the uncertainty. We don't know what lies ahead. Everyone is looking for a way to get through this brick wall. The reality is that not everyone is gonna make it through unscathed, but with the right strategy, again, strategy, we really can get through this brick wall and emerge on a growth trajectory. So I always like to show this brick wall 
concept very graphically because I think it really helps to explain and gives a visual to what's happening. So on the left, you'll see before COVID-19 and here we are conducting our business, moving right along and then bam, we hit this insurmountable obstacle in our path. Business stops, the world as we know it has stopped. What we would like to do is get through this brick wall and end up in business on a path of growth. That's B. For some of us, depending on how we have used the time that we have between hitting the brick wall and exiting the brick wall, we may end up pretty much on the same path that we were on before, conducting business, but maybe not seeing the growth that we may have missed or could be enjoying. And the final path, D, coming out of this brick wall, will probably, for some who weren't able to pivot, maneuver, take advantage, strategize, mean that their business isn't really going to be in a good position coming out of that brick wall and may eventually fail. So the elephant in the room, COVID-19, this brick wall, is what I'll be referring to as the pause. And there's a really good reason why I want to call it the pause. Because it's during that pause where I think a lot of magic can really happen. So before we start talking about the pause, I really want to help you to get a visual or understand the process that we're using here. And I like to use something I call the mall map because very often everybody knows where they want to go, but very often getting there and planning the route to getting there is where we fall a little bit short. And I use this example as a way of, of helping people see that. So imagine I'm going to the mall and I get to the mall and I want to go to, oh, I think of a store. Oh, ladies, you, you can relate. Jimmy Choo. And I want to head to Jimmy Choo and I can find Jimmy Choo on the map. And I'm pretty happy because that's where I want to go. The reality is that unless I have that bright, shining red star that says, you are here, I wouldn't have any idea which direction for me to turn to head to Jimmy Choo. So any, any journey that we go on is really, all, is really mapped by two points. Where you're starting from and where you're going. Now, pulling that back in and going back to this wall concept and being in the pause, we are all in this wall together. We are all in there. But do we know where our businesses are at this point in time? We're not all in the same place in the wall. We need to be clear on where it is we are and where it is we want to go. And here in this pause is where things start to get really interesting. And I wanna get into the power of the pause. Before we, we can really dive into how we can use the pause, we all acknowledge that the COVID-19, this brick wall is a barrier, a problem that's facing us all. And one of the techniques that we'll use is what we call reframing the problem. And in reframing a problem, what we mean is to create a, a different way of looking at a situation. It could be changing your perspective, or just changing the whole meaning as it relates to the issue that you're facing. So let's try this on. The brick roll is real. We can't see it, but it's real and it's there. And one of the first things that we really need to do is to examine the awareness of how we are handling the stress and how we're responding to this obstacle in our business in, in that's stopping us from operating as usual, from moving our business ahead. Where is our stress response? Well, as business leaders, and even in your business, what we're seeing is that there are a number of different responses. Four big 
basic types of responses. And I'm going to explain what they're, what they are. So for some businesses, there is this paralysis. People who are just unable or unwilling to function because they just don't know what to do. And their coping mechanism is to shut down. Literally for some businesses, this means, okay, I'm packing it in. This is really too much for me to handle. I'm selling out. I'm done. I'm exiting. Another response is more of what I refer to as a kind of shock and confused response where people are, they want to stay in business, but they're uncertain as to um, what is going to be their strategy to move ahead and how to make these decisions. So they're in this kind of panicked state. Then we have those businesses who are, you know, they're, they're getting on with stuff. They're trying their best to keep busy, to keep money flowing in, get things done. And there's a lot of activity, a, a whole lot of activity. And for some of these businesses, not all, these actions and activities aren't linked to any real strategic direction. They're not really focused on getting them to a particular point. It's just a matter of survival. And they're still doing stuff. And then you have those businesses who have really wanted to put a contingency plan in place, uh, are busy making a plan, wanting to know really how to get out of this mess and are using the pause, using the time in the brick wall to create the strategies that they need to move ahead. So we have four basic styles that are emerging. Now there's no right or wrong. This is not a, about judgment. What this is about is awareness. If you see yourself in one of those types of stress responses, how then do you feel you can move to another, um, to another way of mobilizing the right strategy that will move you ahead in your business? Well, this is unknown territory. Nobody's ever been here before. And for some people, this is just exacerbating this whole stress response that we're seeing in business. So I'd like to give you another analogy that we use sometimes to help you see that in a different way. So imagine we, are, we wake up lost in the forest. Well, obviously, we can see a lot of trees. <laughs> And a lot of trees are really indicative, indicative and representative of all the problems that we are quite aware of and very attuned to going through COVID-19. There is this in the forest, how do I get out? Which is the right route to take? Again, knowing direction, where you are, where you want to go, but you're in the middle of the forest. You don't know where you are. What happens is that we can use this position and try to elevate the conversation. For example, imagine me hovering around in a helicopter and I throw a rope down and say, hey, grab a hole, come up here and have a look. Let me show you what this territory looks like. Now from that vantage point, you're in a much better position to get a sense of where you are and where you want to go. So this is unknown territory and any information you can get that will really help you to see the bigger picture is going to help you to make the right decisions for your business. My graphic there is of this little guy with all the stuff going on around and just looking up going, well, you know, what next? Where do I go? And here is where we can use um, this type of analogy to help us to see what could be different. So let's move that along to, well, how are we going to reframe? Well, we can recall a challenging experience that we have faced in the past and have overcome su successfully. We've got this memory bank up here of a, a host of experiences that have shaped who we are, how we do business. And these is what, this is what we can draw upon at, at times like this in the pause to really get ourselves back on track. Let me give you an example. I was just sharing with Will earlier. I was very much more in the public arena eight, nine years ago. And this is the first time in a long time that I've really put myself out in a public arena. And yes, it did rattle me. And how did I get through it? I reframed what was the barrier to me exposing my material in this webinar with the experience that I had 
developed over the years of being the person, the face of something, going out there. And we can use the same technique as we face the challenges in our business. As a business person, you would have done this again, or you would have done this for the first time when you were starting up, if you're an entre entrepreneur. There was a challenge to go from zero to your place in the marketplace. This is a time for us to really go back to some of those experiences and see the parallels to what we're facing and reframe the problem this way. Recall the excitement and the, and the confidence that you had going into this new venture that you are going into. I got a call from a business owner in Jamaica and the business owner said to me, um, you know, I, we were really stumped. We didn't really know because we are retail how to move ahead. And he, last night we were up until two in the morning placing orders online for our products to restock our store. We're thinking that because the opening is coming and we want to be prepared. We have an online store now and, and so forth. And the, the, the beautiful, uh, profound statement that dropped right out of this entrepreneur was, it's like starting up all over again. And this really resonated with me. Here is a business owner. Here is someone who doesn't want to be driven by circumstances but wants to be the driver of the vehicle, wants to take control. And we, do, we start by reframing the, prob the problem. Resonating with anybody? Any thumbs up, any waves? Thanks, Graham. So now we're going to talk about this pause. This is an amazingly powerful position that I haven't really heard many people talking about and I, I want to put it out there because it's that powerful. So let's dial it back a bit. In every business, there have been times when we use this technique, we choose to pause for various reasons. For example, when we're having a business retreat or when we're doing a team building exercise or in the restaurant business, they'll close during the seasonal time, the, the off season, um, and then reopen again for the season. This is what I'm referring to as a, vol a voluntary pause. We have made a conscious decision in business that we're gonna pause because we need to do X, Y, and Z. Well, the power of that is that it can be the best choice sometimes for your business in terms of strategy, and also just in terms of sanity and morale, Sometimes you need to take that break. COVID-19 put us all on pause involuntarily. We are in the pause. On the right, there's my guy with a hundred, my entrepreneur with a hundred different things going, into his, going on in his mind. I don't know um, if I don't leverage this pause, maybe somebody else will. What are my competitors doing? They're in the pause too. Are they doing anything? Can you imagine? You're all having these thoughts going through your head. How do we use the power of this time in that brick wall to get ahead in the marketplace? Lot of questions. Can I get my business um, strategy reviewed? Can I come up with a contingency plan? Will I need to put, um, will I need to pivot during the pause? And if I pivot during the pause, am I gonna to need to pivot after the pause? There are so many questions that are, that are going through your heads right now and in the minds of the business leaders all over the world. So how are we gonna make sense of that? Well, we're gonna leverage the pause and we're going to reset rethink and react and i'm going to help you see how we can accomplish that it's a time where we can review and refine our business strategy it's a time in the pause where we can take care of some unfinished tasks get a project up or jump start one you know it's very interesting because during the we have what we call some what I call some pause startups. 
has I'm sure some of you have seen these uh, vehicles delivering food around the island. Let's eat. That's a pause startup. There is a company that didn't exist before COVID-19. Zest, the home delivery meal um, program. Again, I'm not just another example of a pause startup. It may be a time that we can use to actually improve some of our systems so that we're ready for what comes after, or even to set up some new systems. And most importantly, it's a time where we can really manage our energy and stress. So here is the value framework. Here is where we're going to look at those five key components or steps, if you will, that's really going to help you get through that big wall. It's called the value framework, and you'll see why. Well, we're going to spell it out. V is for vision. It's really important before you start anything else at all to create focus and clarity. And, and we'll delve into this a bit more. The A stands for asset management. What is the value of your resource base? Do you know? L is for leverage. Here is where we want to maximize the potential of all of the assets that you have, both tangible and intangible. U is for undertaking, committing to a process. What are the areas that you need to do work in? And five, expectations. And this is probably the most important, I think, because it's really about how it feels. Does it feel right to you? Have you created this vision as you did in, in the first step and taken all the steps and does everything start to feel right? And what do you expect before? Well, we've gone to the before, during and after we get through this brick wall. Taking a deeper dive and rounding it off would be our vision or your vision for your business, getting back to the why resetting and reconnecting. It's all about why you even got into business and why do you want to continue in your business? Has your vision changed because of COVID-19? And if so, how has it changed? Will your vision meet the market with demands coming out of the brick wall post COVID-19? Is the market going to be the same? Does your business model align with your vision? These are some of the, the questions and these are some of the areas that we will work on if, you, if you're in step one. Going into step two, it's all about asset management, taking stock of your assets. What are your core assets? What are you known for in the marketplace? What are these assets worth before, during and after COVID-19? Do you have any gaps that need resourcing? Can you liquidate assets that are not going to be of any value to you? And I want to, I want to go back up to these core assets that I was talking about earlier, because I have an example, which is really interesting. I'd like to share. So there's a company in the UK that does cleaning, cleaning, commercial cleaning, and they entered the market and there are quite a few cleaning companies. And one of the things that was always a barrier or a, 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 an obstacle, would be immigration processes because a lot of the cleaning staff uh, were on uh, either work permits or immigration status was not, they're not maybe UK nationals. So many times you would have immigration coming into um, one of their, their, their jobs and shutting it down because paperwork wasn't in order. We can all relate. And so it was very difficult to gain a good market share when you know you disappoint your customers when they had to cancel the cleaning of of your hotel your contract because there were some problems with paperwork and immigration well this company really said we want to distinguish ourselves and really took it to heart and developed a system of alert making sure that they were ahead of that game and all their paperwork is, was in line hr had that spreadsheet working and I say all of that because what's really interesting is when they took assessment of their core assets, 
they didn't realize that that was their core asset. That was one of the things that really distinguished them. Can you imagine a cleaning company with a hidden core asset, a hidden asset of value that was an HR system? And believe it or not, this company was able to leverage that, sell that software alert system to other companies and add value to their own. So we can move on to step three, since we're talking about leverage. And you really need to ask yourself if you have maximized the potential of your asset base. We just spoke about this, having hidden assets that can really add value to your business. And I just gave you that example. So I want you to consider, well, your positioning, your pricing, your innovativeness, the marketability of your products and services. These are all the things that you should be thinking about in this pause, the power of the pause that allow, is that it allows us the time to, to really focus on these things so we can start putting them into your business plans as you head to exit the brick wall. The fourth step is undertaking. Aspects of your business that you can commit to giving attention to that will add value and that you can commit to doing during the pause. For example, do you need more training? The staff need more training for where you want to go. We can cycle this back and connect it back to the vision in the first step because having that vision allows you to see which of these areas you need to focus on now in the pause. Sales strategy. If you're rolling out a new product line, a new service line, sales strategy, use the pause. There is power in the pause. Product and service design. Production line, how you develop and get your product or service ready for delivery. How you deliver, your delivery systems, your client services. Again, all of these things are areas that could add tremendous value to your business and with the right vision, knowing your asset base and seeing how you can leverage this, your undertaking becomes clear. You can see where the gaps are, where you need to focus your attention. You may not need to do all of these things, but now you're processing your whole vision, what you have to work with, how to leverage it, where I need to make the changes right now. And finally, the, five, the, the fifth step is really looking at your expectations. There's the short term, what's going to be happening in the short term. And, in, and here um, we are entering the brick wall. There are lots of challenges. Things are moving really slowly. There's a lot of fear and, uh, and anxiety. And as I'm saying this, I realize that the short, medium, and long term may be different depending on where you are. For some of you, the short, you're more in the medium term. And in the medium term, you're in that brick wall. You're in this space of not knowing exactly what's going to happen next. We know it's not going to last forever, but we're in a, a now a state of acceptance. Okay, this is where we are. There's less struggle to move. And we know that even though we may feel a little bit disillusioned, this is a time where we can use this pause to pivot and leverage everything we have in our business. So the medium term in the, in the pause is a really powerful position and it's really gonna set us up our expectations of what's gonna happen in the long term. And here is where we exit the brick wall and we're all excited and elated because there's an acknowledgement, a resolve that we now have an opportunity to move ahead. And this vision that we have created, this vision that we have solidified, we can roll that out. This is where we feel like we are like the lady, the, the business owner, the entrepreneur from Jamaica who called and said, you know, it's like starting up all over again. Yes, this is the rollout. This is a new business. And finally, just some quick comments around pivoting. So this pivot, what we've been talking about, 
they're, oops, sorry. Many businesses pivot to take advantage of a business opportunity that, that may be temporary. And during COVID-19, what we're seeing is a lot of people are pivoting because this keeps cash flowing during the lockdown period and the limited trading period. So for it, with all of the, the, um, the requirements and the restrictions. So for example, I was talking to a, a restaurant business owner the other day in Cayman, and I said, how, is the, how are things going? I see you have pivoted. You are now no longer a fine dining in restaurants. You are a drive-by uh, takeout service. And uh, he said, yes, uh, it's been interesting. But in terms of sales, I would say it's very surprising. We are at 75 to 80% of what we normally do. And the pivot has been good. It's kept the cash flowing in the business. Then we started to talk about medium, short term, sorry, short, medium, and long term. So what's going to happen in the long term? Do you think you're going to have to pivot again? And, well, yes, this person this business owner saw the vision for his business wasn't really affected in the long term um, by COVID-19. And the expectation that he has is that after COVID-19, there will be an adjustment period, but he'll pivot back. He will open his dining room and so forth. But now he may keep some of that uh, takeout business that really wasn't a feature of his business plan before. What do you call what's going on here? That's leveraging the pause. That's pivoting, doing everything you can to leverage every moment of the time we have in this pause. After the pause, again, here comes our rollout, our business strategy, and we get to pivot again based on our vis your vision of where you want your business. Now, that really is the meat of everything. But I always like to, as part of a business process, to check in. And part of the check-in is going back to what I said really early on, which is, why even listen? And I want to check in to see if some of those things happen for you. Well, it, it's still free, and we're still here. And hopefully, I was able to give some of you a new perspective. And if so, Thumbs up would be great. This was really featuring three things. The pause, leveraging the pause, and um, what you're gonna do after the pause using the, the value framework. You're looking for a process. You, are look, you may have been looking for a process to help you develop the right strategy. Hopefully, during the presentation, there was something that you could take away, and I'll give you a chance in a few minutes to maybe offer some commentary on that. Um, wanting to feel confident that you're making the right business decision. You're not alone. You're not alone in the pause and there is huge power. And having said all of that, I hope that I have given you a little bit of a feel for what a coached, a business coach experience could feel like. Again, this is very conceptual. We have We've scratched the surface. There's a lot of stuff there if we drill down and maybe we'll get a chance to do that at a later date. So wrapping things up, I'd really like to open the floor if anyone would like to share some lessons learned. I think there is, that will change the way we do business. I think there is huge um, advantage and there's huge value in um, sharing the experiences of being in this unique situation of hitting this brick wall. It's a, this is a powerful way of creating a cohesion and some synergies that may come out of um, the conversation. So if you have something you want to share, please raise your hand and open the discussion. And thank you for your time. Will, now is when we can do the Q&A. Fantastic. Um, I see. I see we have a, <clears throat> excuse me, I see we have a question, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask her to unmute her mic. No, nope, she knows how to do that. Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. I wasn't sure if it was 
uh, me or not, but you. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you know, coincidentally or synchronistically, um, I have my uh, notebook here um, to take some notes. And on top of each page of my notebook, I write my own affirmation and I do it way ahead of time. So I never know what it's going to say when I turn my next page, even though I wrote it. And when I turned to a new page um, to make some, take some more notes from uh, all the information being shared on the top of my page says in my own writing, create your treasure map. And I just thought that was super cool because Kathy made reference in the beginning to, you know, mapping through them all where you are to where you want to go. And the whole presentation was about recognizing your assets and these hidden gems and um, really um, developing them into something that will help save your business and add to your business. And here on my notebook says create your own treasure map. And I just wanted to share that because going through this process, there, for those who are looking for it and for confirmation, there are, um, you know, these treasures and these hidden assets. And, and when they start lining up as synchronicity, as crazy coincidence, they really are confirmations for us to go forward and to be brave, be creative, and, you know, put some things away, open new things. And um, so I just wanted to kind of just share that. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I think Rosie had a question in the chat. She said, can you address how uh, what you presented might be applicable on a personal level? Right. So uh, I'm really glad you asked that because there is, it, there's definitely um, value. I, I'm using that word again of using the framework in a, on a personal basis. Um, that actually, that framework is actually um, my creation that use that I use also in career uh, coaching where we really use that idea that uh, Tricia was talking about, about mapping from A to B where you want to go and using the value framework to help you process the decisions that are facing you on a personal level. What is it you're trying to achieve? What is your vision? What personal assets, what are you known for? How can that be leveraged to create the transition or the change or the movement or journey that you have articulated in your vision? And then what do you need to do to commit to in order to make that happen? And most importantly is the expectation. So in my career uh, coaching um, arena, wearing that hat, it would look something like this, Rosie. If you wanted, for example, to become an architect or, to, or something like that, then when you get down to expectations, it would, it would be around well, do you want to be the architect or do you want to be the builder? Do you want to be the dentist or the dental assistant? Do you want to be the, the doctor's assistant, the nurse, the doctor, the administrator? So expectations really provide the gloss or the, the, the finishing onto your vision. I hope that helps, Rosie. So what, tell, tell us a little bit more about um, what is business coaching generally? So, so we get a sense as to how as a business coach you would assist either people in business or entrepreneurs or give us an idea on how that works, Kathy. Sure. Oh, this is something I really love to do. Um, I guess the, the, the easiest way of thinking about it is looking at all the professional athletes, for example, in the world, they all have coaches. And you might think, why would they need a coach? They're so good at what they do. But we accept that in, in the sporting world because a coach, Tiger Woods has an energy coach. Tiger Woods has a, 
an athletics coach. And we accept that coaches are uh, attuned to being able to see talent, bring talent to the fore. In a business setting, coaches use tools like the value framework to start conversations and create um, shifts in people's perceptions of things so that I can see as I can hear and see when I'm talking to a business leader, an entrepreneur, where the energy, where the blocks are to performance, where they're struggling within themselves, because I'm an outsider. Mm -hmm. I don't have any skin in the game. I'm not, I'm not benefiting in any way and I'm not making the decisions, but what I can do is help them nudge them around the areas that make them uncomfortable because those are the areas where the, the real value is going to come when they're able to address those barriers and move forward. Similarly with teams, we work with tools like communication skills, tools that help you to create common language in business that will help business leaders articulate their vision at the highest level in the boardroom all the way down to their frontline staff. Having available, are they having um, that type of business language that's simplified and available can be a real good way of communicating very effectively and getting teams, uh, a cohesion among teams. So, so they, like, you meet every week. Uh, do you normally set a time to meet as a business coach? Is it an informal relationship? Is it, is a, is it a business relationship? Is it, it is a, a personal business. relationship? I mean, it's kind, of, all, kind of get a sense of it. It's all of, it can be any and all of the above. So um, one of the first things is to have the discovery. Well, there's an informal chat and then there's a discovery. And the discovery period is really where, um, as a bu business coach, what we're trying to do is see what are the needs of the organization. Is it, um, I'm working with a uh, department of government right now with about 150 um, employees and there are varying needs. At the upper tiers of management, there are um, leadership skills that need to be um, developed and there is executive coaching that addresses that. At the lower levels of the new recruits coming in, there are um, communication and self-awareness uh, type coaching, which is going to help them to bond and form teams. So it re they're entrepreneurs. Like I told you, I had a, a call from an entrepreneur, one of my clients, who was struggling with this whole, um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm stuck, I can't move. And helping to... to help them to see where they can make changes. It all crystallizes, it's a co-creative process. It crystallizes in the mind of the entrepreneur and the persons or teams being coached what they need to do. It's not a telling um, type of situation where I come in with my, thought, my, my plan and here it is, I'm laying it out for you. I use tools to help people find the right path for themselves. Well, obviously, you know, we go back to your presentation. We're, we're in a pause moment, right? As you, for the country, right? So I use the analogy where January and February, we were talking about, we were complaining about traffic. We were complaining about high cost of accommodations. We were going into a record breaking tourism season. Uh, we were talking about, you know, things like a cruise birthing facilities to expand that industry. And, suddenly we got a body blow in March and now we're in that pause moment. So it's gonna be interesting to see, like you said, you're working with one government department, but I believe government itself is in pause, right? And from a broader sense, because tourism right now is definitely paused, right? So the question coming out of this is, you know, what those businesses that were affected and say dive industry, the boat, the charter companies, all of those companies are in pause. The question, like you've said, is, I guess the point is, for, as a business coach, what advice would you give to those people who really, they've never, this is completely something they never, when they woke up in December, believing that they're going to have a record breaking season and high season to wake up and say, I have no business. So what do you tell those people? Uh, the, the telling part 
it's more the conversation that needs to happen. And this is part of what thankfully you were able to facilitate today, where we look at reframing. We were all, the, yes, for, for a person like, like you've described, they're stumped, they're stuck. We see what their stress response is. They, there is the opportunity to make a choice to move from that position, but you need to be aware of where you are. And once you're aware of that, talking with a coach can be part of, like I, this is part of what happens during the discourse working with a business coach. So you're able to say to the business owner, okay, um, the situation you're in right now, um, tell me about that. Um, why is it so stressful for you? Where are the blocks for you? Um, what are the things that you'd like to do that you can't do? And then we start looking at, okay, so we can't change the pause. We're in the pause, but we can change how we use our time in the pause. I met a business person, um, a businessman uh, a couple of days ago, and I said, how are things going? I haven't seen you since, I call it the pause, since the pause. And he said, oh, well, and his whole demeanor just crumbled in front of me. The head went down, the shoulders went down. This is not working, that is not working. This project is stopped, that project is stopped. Here we have the person that you just described to me, completely defeated, but can't, wanting to go ahead. And there was, it was very visible in the language that was being used and how it was communicated that their, the block needed to, they, they needed to reframe their situation so they could get the, the drive and the energy to move ahead. Unfortunately, didn't have the time and it wasn't the place, but for someone like that, it would be the start of a conversation around, when have you faced, what was the biggest challenge you've faced in the past? And how can some of the lessons you've learned there and experiences from that period, how can we bring some of that into what's happening to you now? Something that you didn't think was even possible that you could ever do, and you did it. And here we are, you can't see how you're going to, how are you gonna get back what you've lost? How are you gonna get a business started again? Will tourists ever come back? I mean, there's, there's, there's this, I, 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 in business, sometimes it's not the best thing to talk about an energy block, but yes, people are energetically blocked. And thank God for people like Trisha Cybersma, and I'm going to plug her here because she is my energy coach. And we have been doing through her, she's the only heart math practitioner in the Caribbean. And her techniques of helping to calm the, the, depleting energy and bring people to a restorative energy is just part and, and works really nicely and hand in hand with all of what we're doing here, which is trying to get people to use the pause. There's power in the pause. There are Absolutely. lessons to be learned. There's ground to be gained. There's market share to recapture. There's new markets to explore. There's innovativeness that hasn't been thought of. So there's another question. I think I think uh, Debbie has a question. I'm gonna ask her to unmute. Debbie. Um, yeah. Hi. Thank you. I've really enjoyed um, the presentation. It's it really lets us examine where we're at. Because quite frankly, I'm I'm out of the pause, but you know, really aware of daily things going on in business. But it's hard to tell if we're in the middle or if we're still in the <laughs> Beginning. Yeah, but um, it, it's it's good. It, it, I appreciate you know it, it make we have to be aware of what we're at instead of just gliding through like having awareness and um, also to plan and like you're right to reassess our goals and and certain things have worked. For instance, with Pure Art, we got permission to deliver and we never delivered. And this makes me think there may be a lot of people still working from home that would want that to continue. So I do really appreciate this where we need to reassess where we're going forward. So Debbie, could I ask you, how, how has the pause affected you and your business generally, if you wanna open up that conversation? It may be uncomfortable, I know, but just how have you gotten through it? Well, you know, for a while there, I really just personally got through it 
And then we, when we were getting close to thinking we may be able to reopen in a certain capacity, you start focusing back on business. And that really is very healthy because that's so much a part of who I am too, my business. And um, it's very, very hard. I mean, it really is like starting over, like way back in the days you pay a bill, you make money and you pay this person. And we were just riding high, paying everything, no thought. So, I mean, in a way it's good. It makes us reassess our budgets and how we're spending and what our real goals are for our business. So in a way, like you say, the, the crisis is good in a lot of ways, but it certainly isn't easy. You kind of have to stay positive and not let the unknown get to you, you know. Any, le any lessons learned that you can share? Well, um, yeah, I, I guess in a way it was kind of good that we had a very good season for Christmas and then New Year, and I kind of ignored that money. So we, we got into the New Year and into this crisis having a bit of a backup financially, because otherwise it would have been, you know, catastrophic. So starting over, we're, we're really right now at a sort of even keel. And, and I kind of thought that come July 1st, if we were open by then, we'd be okay. So, you know, I think we're okay. But, you know, I guess that would be it to kind of, like they say, put aside some money for a rainy day. And I had kind of unintentionally done that. And it's really helped me not to have to worry about that financial stress as much, although it is still stressful. <laughs> But yeah, at least I can go forward, you know. Is that something that now that you've had this experience, um, you'll probably have that little cushion um, there for future? Well, if it's possible, I mean, right now, I'm sure like all small businesses, I mean, I guess I'm a medium business because I didn't get any help from government. So it's all, you know, on me. And it's it's been a lot of, you know, a lot to go through but you know you do stay positive because you believe in your business and a lot of people have supported us so um i would like to be able to say sure we'll do that but right now you're just kind of trying to pay all the bills and go forward so i wouldn't say we're sort of um in the medium area quite yet we're still in the pause and sort of pivoting time where we're going forward because we don't really know where our forward is exactly yet you know well, it sounds like the pivot may be uh, for you, the delivery service that you might carry on after the pause. And yeah, thank and, you. And we, we're, we're very lucky. They did allow retail to safe, safely open. I have a retail store. And so now the folks that do come in, because it's not as busy, it is a safe shopping experience, you know. So in that way, it's like, it, it is all for the good and it's all very, it is positive when folks come in, it's fabulous. So the, the you know, shopping experience in the store is still the best, but I think you're right. Like we should be reaching out to more corporate deliveries and things like that where we can. Thank, well, well, thank you, Debbie, appreciate it very thank much. You. Um, thank we you have, very uh, much, we appreciate it. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, Graham, I believe, yeah. had something he, he wanted to say in a comment. Yes, I just wanted to comment that uh, I really appreciated uh, Kathy's comment about rising above the forest. I've always used that analogy, uh, not necessarily a forest, but just rising above the crowd and trying to analyze what's going on, what's changed. Um, I, I respect the fact that uh, Cayman's in a, in a little more unique situation than we are in Toronto, which is where I am now. I'm a commercial real estate broker with Cobalt Banker. And um, you know, one of the things I've noticed is you know, trying to see what are the changes out there. There used to be a flood of emails in my inbox every day from other commercial realtors, you know, advertising their product, and I would get all sorts of emails daily. I noticed a significant drop off in those, which is I'm I'm, I'm going to take that as being uh, Kathy's first position as uh, people that were paralyzed by the pause, and um, so I, I noted that. I mean, this is what I've always done is try to figure out where the opportunity is. So I ramped up my marketing and uh, I started doing that very early on. I just put them in early April. Uh, as a result, my sales, last year's my sales were, were good. I, it wasn't excellent, but it, it was good. This year I doubled my sales uh, by June, wow. by the beginning of this month, uh, over what I did last year. 
Um, I'm not going to say it's strictly because of the increased marketing. There were some hangovers from last year. But um, again, I think trying to find out what's changed and also building alliances and partnerships with others. You've got a series of companies that, you know, in the diving industry, for example, I mean, there's got to be a common thread of problems for all of them. So perhaps there's a way to form an association or through an association to do maybe online diving videos, uh, things that can be then marketed and advertised, building a site that's got partnerships that generates revenue. So, I mean, there's a lots of different things I think that need to be looked at. So there's a lot of creativity, I think, that uh, can be brought forth today. Wow, sounds like you leveraged the pause. I did, and I still am. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Graham. Thank you. Okay, are you there? I didn't hear you for a while, sorry, oh, Will. My, my apologies, I guess I was on mute. <laughs> yeah, I just said, he's simply saying that this, uh, Anson said, he talked about the analogy, he likes your analogy. Um, he said, I think it was Churchill who said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Ah. He's actually right. And he, the thing about it is, um, I think a lot of businesses are so wrapped up in their, their balance sheet that many times they, they just don't really take a hard look or allow themselves to be looked at from outside. And I guess a business coach could very well be that answer for some of these particularly micro and small businesses, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if there are, uh, there's three, a couple, couple more messages uh, or some people saying they liked your presentation. Awesome. And, um, and then there's some articles. So if there are any more questions, again, raise your hand. Otherwise, I'm going to bring this webinar to a close and just say thanks to Kathy and excellent presentation. Gave us a lot to think about. And I hope um, people who, you know, if you've never evaluated, um, you know, whether you would like to engage with a business coach, you know, this is, could be your opportunity. As, as Ms. Saberzma said, you know, um, it may be a coincidence that you're in this webinar, maybe not. Um, but at the end of the day, Kathy is now available if you guys are interested in seeking a business coach in any way. And I hope this webinar provided you with some useful information. Just remember that we have it on our Chamber COVID's update.ky. It's recorded and we will be posting it to our website. So thank you very much, Kathy. Appreciate it very much for your expertise. And I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for the opportunity. Bye, everyone.